Fluffy is a little brown dog. One day she is so quiet and still, her mistress thinks something is wrong. What is it, Snuffy? We'll take you to the vet. He will know what the matter is. Snuffy is very well. Soon she will have some puppies. Everyone is very glad. Snuffy is very hungry. She has extra food to help her stay strong and healthy. Nine weeks later, in the middle of the night, what do you think happens? Start counting. One, two, three little brown puppies are born. They are so new, their eyes have not yet opened. But they are hungry already. Snuffy lies on her side to let her babies feed on her milk. Soon they can walk a little bit, but sometimes they bump and fall down. Their eyes are still closed. When they are three weeks old, they can open their eyes and see. Now they are ready to play. Snuffy has a lot to teach them. The little pups learn to go outside for certain things. The puppies have their own dishes, just like their mothers. They always lick their dishes clean and grow bigger each day. Snuffy likes to watch her little family. She thinks, what fine puppies I have, the best ones in the world. Snuffy and the fire. One day, Snuffy, the small brown dog, woke up suddenly from her doze on the lawn. Her nice cold nose could smell something burning. Sniff, 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 sniff. That's not bonfire smoke, she said. She followed her nose out of the garden, up the road, and then she stopped. Black smoke was pouring out of the window of a yellow house with a red roof. Snuffy was very worried. What can I do, she thought. I must get help quickly. She ran to the fire station. She thumped on the door with her front paws. What's the matter, Snuffy? asked the friendly fireman. The 
yellow house is on fire. Follow me, said Snuffy. In no time at all, the fire engine was on its way. There was a huge cloud of black smoke over the yellow house. Hurry, hurry, cried Snuffy. Leave it to us, said the fireman. Quickly they rolled out the hose and turned on the water. Splish, splash, splish. The water put out all the flames. The yellow house was very wet. The curtains were wet, the carpets were wet. But the fire was out. The fireman said, Snuffy, you are a very clever dog. You saved the yellow house. We must give you a reward. The fireman made Snuffy the fire brigade's mascot. From that time on, Snuffy carefully sniffed every house she passed to be sure there was no sign of smoke. She wanted to be sure she was a proper firehouse dog. You can help Snuffy too if you always watch out for fire. Snuffy may not always be there to help. Poppy Pig's Garden One fine day, Poppy Pig came out for air and thought, My garden needs some work. It's a mess out there. The grass was very much too high. So Poppy pushed the mower back and forth, back and forth, until all the high grass was cut. Now it must be raked, she said, and carried away to dry. It was hard work, but Poppy didn't mind. She was not so big, but she was strong. Then she watered all her plants, and she thought, My garden still needs more. I will need to buy some new flowers. Just then, Bill Posey came to visit. Poppy was happy to see her. I was just about to go shopping for some new flowers, she said. Would you like to go with me? Oh, yes, said Posy. She was so happy, she did a little dance. So off they went to market and they were thinking about which flowers they would buy. Finally, they decided to buy some blue ones. 
and little Posy helped to dig little holes and put them into the ground. You did a good job, Posy, said Poppy Pig. Then Poppy worked to clip the hedge. She tried to make it nice and straight. She clipped it evenly from edge to edge. I'll rake the leaves, said little Posy, and she worked so hard to get each leaf that Poppy said, "You'll soon be very hungry." Just then, she saw two apples on the ground. Round and red, one for each of us," she said. They sat to rest, and ate the sweet apples. And Poppy thanked her little niece for helping to make her garden neat. John. One fine spring day, Farmer John went out to sow some seeds. He walked up and down, scattering them this way and that. But high over the trees flew some hungry birds. They saw Farmer John. And thought how good the seeds would taste. The birds swooped down on Farmer John's garden. Peck, 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 peck! All the seeds were eaten up. Farmer John was very angry. He waved his arms and shouted, "Go away, you horrible birds! Those are my seeds!" Flap, flap, flap! The birds flew off into the sky. The seeds were very good. The birds said, "When Farmer John goes home, we'll get some more." But Farmer John didn't go home. He fetched a long stick, a tall broom, an old coat, and a bright red scarf. I'll show those birds a trick or two," he said. He stuck the broom in the ground and fixed the stick across it. He put the old coat and the bright red scarf around them. In no time at all, he had made a scarecrow. It looked so much like a real man that the birds were scared. They flapped and fluttered and flew off into the sky. They didn't dare eat any more of Farmer John's seeds. The sun shone, and the rain watered the ground. The seeds grew into beautiful blue flowers, but that wasn't all. Farmer John fetched some wood and some nails. Bang, bang, bang! What could he be making? It was a bird table. Now the birds could eat the seeds that Farmer John gave them, and not be scared away. Farmer John was happy. Now the birds are my friends. I shall sit in the sun and watch them eat," he said. And I shall enjoy my flowers too.
lifeboat. One day, Dan set out in his boat. The weather looked bad, but Dan thought he would be all right. A lifeboat man watched Dan. Don't go too far, he called. The weather is getting worse and the waves are big, but Dan didn't really listen. He was having so much fun, he went on heading out to sea. At first it was exciting. Dan's boat went up and down on the waves. But as the weather got worse, he began to be worried. The wind blew harder and harder. The sea got very rough, and a big wave lifted Dan's boat high out of the water. Up and up the boat went until it turned over. Dan was thrown into the sea. Help, help, he shouted. Dan was good at swimming, but he didn't know which way to go. His boat was gone, and he was lost. Luckily for Dan, the lifeboat man had seen his boat go down. He called his mates to help. They put on their life jackets and went out to sea in their lifeboat as quickly as they could. The strong lifeboat man pulled him out of the water and into their boats. I nearly drowned, said Dan to the lifeboat man. I should have listened to you and stayed near the shore and worn my life jacket too. Poor Dan, he felt very stupid. But the lifeboat men soon cheered him up and everyone was happy because Dan was safe and well. The next day Dan's boat was washed ashore. Wasn't he lucky? From now on, I'll always be careful when I go out in my boat, promised Dan. Miffy, Miffy, we love you. You always know just what to do. Two long ears and button eyes and just my size. Miffy, Miffy, oh so true. 